Um, so now we've gone through three of the four types of information. The number of peaks, um, the amount of chemical shift, um, the integration, and the fourth uh, type of information is the splitting. In fact, um, you should make a note, everything I've drawn up to now has been unrealistic because I haven't shown any peak splitting. I don't know if you've seen splitting, uh, if you haven't been attending the lectures, you might have missed that. But actually, these peaks are usually more complicated than I've drawn them. I've simplified all these peaks because usually the main peaks are split into sub-peaks. So all of the spectra I've been drawing are oversimplified, and now we're going to see that complication. So first of all, let's try to predict the main parts of the spectrum here. So I would think that uh, peak A would be around here, and maybe peak B would be around here. And this peak's a little bit lower because it only represents two hydrogens, and this represents three. So I'm just roughly speaking showing the spectrum here. Now we have to learn the n plus 1 rule. And the n plus 1 rule says that um, if you are adjacent to n non-equivalent hydrogens, your peak will be split into n plus 1 subpeaks. That's a set of equivalent hydrogens. are adjacent to n non-equivalent hydrogens to n hydrogens. I don't know how to phrase this. Not n hydrogens. They're not equivalent. one sub -peaks. This is hard to describe. It's easier to see with some examples. So we'll just look at some examples here. Okay. Uh, so to look at some examples, let's start with uh, these hydrogens over here, the A's. All right. Now, these are all equivalent to each other. How many other hydrogens are adjacent to them? Well, here N would be two because these are adjacent to these two hydrogens that are not equivalent to them. So for these hydrogens, N would be two. They're equivalent, I'm uh, sorry, they're adjacent to these two hydrogens over here. And then N plus one would be three, which means that this peak over here would really be split into a triplet. When you actually look at the spectrum, it's actually split into subpeaks. So um, when you look why at... Why would it be two? Why would n be two? n is the number of hydrogens that are adjacent to you. Oh, okay. And here there's two hydrogens adjacent to these hydrogens. So what we're doing here is we're, we're focusing on a. We're focusing on the a peak. Um, well, the a hydrogens are adjacent to two other hydrogens. So they're going to, uh, according to the n plus one rule, their peak is going to get, the a peak is going to get split into three sub-peaks. Yeah, you use, Pascal, um, you use Pascal's triangle to figure out the ratios. You ever seen Pascal's triangle? So, um, so, for example, if you have three peaks, they should be in a ratio of one to two to one. The areas of three peaks should be a ratio of one to two to one, which I can't really draw, so I'm not going to try to draw that over here. Um, but the area under the middle peak should be twice the area under the side peak over here, uh, according to Pascal's triangle. That's not the most important thing we'll be going over here right now, though. The main thing is the n plus 1 rule. So uh, we won't have time to really worry about Pascal's triangle too much uh, today. 
that's uh, a little bit, uh, that can be important, but that's not the crucial issue. The crucial thing is how many subpeaks you're split up into. Uh, and this would be called a triplet. So we would say this is split into a T, a triplet. So this would be split into a triplet over here. Okay, uh, obviously I'm not, uh, I'm not the best drawer in the world. So this is just roughly speaking what the printout would look like, these three peaks split up here. Okay, uh, well, to, for practice, let's do the, these hydrogens over here. So let's look at the B hydrogens. What would N be for the B hydrogens? So N plus one would be, so B is actually split, in, split into a quartet with a ratio of one to three to three to one. Uh, notice in Pascal's triangle, each number is the sum of the numbers above it. So two is one plus one, and three is one plus two, and four is one plus three, and six is three plus three, four is three plus one, okay. But again, that's not really the key issue we'll go over here today. So roughly speaking, uh, this would look So here I've split this up into a quartet. So all of the spectrum I've drawn earlier today were oversimplified because I wasn't showing the splitting. All of the spectra I've shown on the blackboard before now were oversimplified because I wasn't showing the splitting. You, almost, you usually always get the splitting, which is a complication, but it also gives you more information. This is actually helpful to us because then we could look at this peak here and we could say, aha, not only are these hydrogens probably on a carbon with an electronegative atom, but they're adjacent to a carbon, but they're adjacent to three other hydrogens. This is actually very useful information when you're solving the puzzle of what the structure is. You would look at this peak and say, well, these are above 2.5, so their carbon has an electronegative atom. Uh, and you would say they're probably adjacent to three hydrogens because this is a quartet. Usually we abbreviate a quartet as Q. And, uh, from, and from the integration, from the integration, you would know there's two of these. So you'd know a lot about these. And then from the integration here, you'd know there's three of these hydrogens. Um, you would know they're probably not on a carbon with an electronegative atom because they're um, too far upfield. And you know that they are adjacent to two hydrogens because they're split into a triplet. So for A, it's 1, 2, 1, and for B, it's 1, 3, 3, 1? Right, from Pascal's triangle. Again, these numbers are not the most important those thing. Those are the heights. Those are the areas. Okay. That's why it's hard for me to really draw this accurately. It should be the areas that are in that ratio, not the heights. Okay. Um, that's why it's nice for the calculator to, uh, and the computer to calculate the areas for you. Okay. But the most important thing is not the ratios here, but simply the amount of splitting, because that tells you how many hydrogens you're adjacent to, and that's another useful piece of the puzzle. So we already saw, how do you figure out how many hydrogens each peak represents? Well, that's the integration. And how do you figure out how many hydrogens they're adjacent to? Well, that is the splitting, and that's helpful, useful information when you're solving these puzzles, if you can keep track of it all. Um, so I can see a common mistake here is it would be very easy to think that N was three here, since there's three hydrogens. Notice that N represents the number of hydrogens you're adjacent to. N is the number of hydrogens you're adjacent to, not the number of hydrogens in your own group. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's see if we can look at it. Um, yeah. Wait, so then, the, you know how the area under the total P Gives you the ratios. Remember yep. everything we said right. before? So then, does that mean A, A is 4 and B is 8? Right? Uh, A here would have an integration of 2, and B would have an integration of 3. Oh, you there just take three, the two. highest peak? So the integration tells you the total area under all of these sub peaks. When you look at the integration, that's telling you the total area under all of these subteams. Total subteams. area, wouldn't it be 1 plus 3 plus 3 plus 1? Um, well, uh, what we're saying here is that these areas are in a ratio of 1 to 3 to 3 to 1. But that could be different, a different scale than these ratios over here. Uh, so this is in a ratio of 1 to 2 to 1. And this is a ratio of 1 to 3 to 1. But these are not comparable to each other. These are different ratios. These are different okay. ratios. Um, it's kind of like saying if one room, if one room has a ratio of five men to two women, and another room has a ratio of three men um, to four women, 
that does not mean that the total ratio is eight to six. You can't just compare numbers from different ratios. Right, I do, I thought it yeah. Was the same. yeah, so those are, these are different ratios. Okay. For all we know, this could really represent here 20 men and eight women. And this could only be three and four. Okay, so these are, uh, in a ratio, the numbers are only comparable within that same ratio. So when we talk about the integration, when we say the integration here is three to two, we mean that the total area under all of these peaks here is three, and the total area here is two. And again, that's information that hopefully the computer will just tell you. Okay, so we should try to look at a more complicated example of splitting. So 